So, TV shows on Netflix are the big new thing, an exciting new medium that can maximize a niche audience and foster much-needed space for stories and subject matter that might not fit with the more rigid business models of blockbuster theatrical movies or advertiser-driven network television. Fresh visions like a look behind the curtain of Washington's career political class, daring subject matter like the complex social hierarchies of a women's prison. Now, in its boldest venture yet, Netflix original programming will take a risk-filled dive into the untested, uncharted, totally unprecedented realm of... Marvel Comics superheroes who will start out on their own and then join forces for a spectacular team-up event. Okay, all kidding aside, this is actually pretty cool news. Marvel Disney is going to do four separate direct-to-Netflix TV series, each with an initial 13-episode season order, based on four separate characters, all of which will conclude jointly in a miniseries where they'll team up as the Defenders. Differentiating this from the Avengers, supposedly, will be the conceit that these will be street-level crime-fighter-type heroes, mainly operating in New York City, as opposed to globe and or universe-hopping save-the-world heroes. If nothing else, this is an answer to a question I've had since the beginning of this whole Marvel movie experiment. Are they big enough to go small? What I mean is, yeah, Thor will clearly get you to 400 million worldwide. Captain America, same basic deal. Iron Man, even bigger. You get the picture. But when you start getting deeper into the catalog, yeah, I don't know if there's $400 million worth of people on the planet who want to go see a movie about Stingray. But maybe you can make some profit off guys like that if you're willing to make smaller movies with lower budgets or even TV shows. So, who do they have lined up for this new venture? Daredevil. Okay, this guy I imagine most people have heard of thanks to that not terribly good, not terribly terrible, but not terribly popular Ben Affleck movie from a few years back. Real name Matt Murdock, civilian occupation lawyer. As a child, he was accidentally dosed with toxic chemicals which rendered him blind but enhanced his other senses to superhuman levels, which he uses to fight crime as the man without fear. This guy has always had the most TV-ready profile in the entire Marvel canon, a superhero who's also a lawyer. There's a reason so many TV shows are about attorneys. It's a good world to ground episodic television in. No story or supporting cast details have yet been released for any of these series, but in this one I'd call it a safe bet that we'll see the Kingpin turn up, but hopefully not Elektra because rushing into that is how they blew it the last time. I wouldn't be surprised, however, to see an appearance by The Hand, Marvel's all-purpose ninja bad guys, since a martial arts story point would provide a handy connection to one of the other characters in this project. Iron Fist. Real name, Danny Rand. Left for dead in the Himalayas as a boy when his wealthy parents were betrayed by a supposed friend, Danny finds his way to a mythical lost city where he trains in the martial arts and gains mystical fighting powers. They've been trying to make this guy into a movie or a TV show now for well over a decade, almost doing it with Ray Park back in the early zeros. In the comics, he was the most enduring of a whole slew of books Marvel launched in the 70s to try and jump on the kung fu bandwagon, and his supporting cast has included magical, martial arts, and street crime elements over the years, so it's anybody's guess what direction the series will go in. One supporting player I really hope turns up, though, is Misty Knight, an ex-cop turned crime fighter who lost her arm in a bombing but got a cybernetic replacement limb from Tony Stark. Misty is one of the coolest women in the entire Marvel Universe and has also been Danny Rand's long-term romantic interest, which was actually a pretty big deal at the time. For a period in the 70s and 80s, Iron Fist was the best friend and sidekick to yet another hero in this mix... Luke Cage. Luke was Marvel's equivalent to 70s black exploitation icons, or at least that was the idea. Sent to jail for a crime he didn't commit, Cage volunteers for science experiments that grant him bulletproof skin and superhuman strength. The big twist? Luke is the hero for hire, a guy who sells his superhero services rather than doing it out of sheer altruism, at least at first. A bona fide Marvel legend who nonetheless spent a long stretch of time out of the spotlight, he was rocketed back onto the A-list via a surprise supporting role in the well-regarded mature audience's series Alias, which found him as the would-be love interest of its main character, and also participant in this Netflix venture, Jessica Jones. Okay, this is a little complicated. In Alias, Jessica Jones was introduced as having been a mostly forgotten, i.e. because they made her up and retroactively added her to continuity, superheroine in the Marvel Universe during the 70s who quit the costumed life after a traumatic incident wherein she was held captive and sexually tortured by Zedediah Kilgrave, aka the supercriminal Purple Man. So named because he's purple, and also a man. In the present, Jones is a hard-living private investigator specialized at snooping in superpowered circles. The series was a big hit, and eventually Jessica became a permanent fixture in the mainstream Marvel Universe, eventually having a child with Luke Cage, marrying him, and ultimately re-entering the life of a costumed heroine. The series presumably will draw most from the Alias era stories. Now as for that proposed team name, they've almost definitely taken it because it sounds cool. In the comics, The Defenders has been the name of a bunch of different groups that cropped up whenever team books were popular and Marvel needed to shove a bunch of characters together. Here, I imagine the linguistic rationale will be that these are the little people heroes who primarily protect their city, as opposed to the Avengers who are more of an attack team. And, uh, yeah, that's a primer on all that. 
Now, Marvel, please don't do anything significant for like a week. I really want to do a show about something else next time. I'm Bob, and that's The Big Picture. (laughs) 